I thought it was about time we introduced the thrilling aspect of being that rabbit, mm. the blue-coated maniac that is Peter. I mean, he's such an extraordinary figure in my life, anyway. Actually, I'm opening a library later in mm. your great city, um, in Gorton, um, and it's a Peter Rabbit library, because he's, he's so iconic to me, because my father used to oh. read Peter Rabbit tales to me in that beautiful magic roundabout voice, so it's part of my childhood and part of the luck that I had, I was a child who was read to, you mm. know? Because he was the voice of the Magic Rabbit. He also wrote, he also wrote yes. the English scripts, didn't yeah, he? So. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think that's where I've got my penchant for writing for, well, this thing of writing for children. Mm -mm. Dad always said, I don't write for children. I don't understand what that means. Children are merely people who haven't lived here as long as we have. Oh. You can't talk to them as though they've come from another planet. So he would write, he would write episodes of the Magic Roundabout, which had lots of political references in, you know, to Harold Wilson <laughs> and things, or and use phrases like "hoist with your own petard" and mm. getting letters from ladies saying, "You can't use words like this in a children's program." And he'd write back apologetic letters, and get out the Oxford English Dictionary, and include all the longest words he could find, <laughs> <laughs> just to sort of irritate. That's a really good approach. Very good approach. I mean, the language that you hear when you're little affects everything. You think of Alan Bennett, whose father used to refer to dogs as filthy lamppost smelling articles. Mm. And you go, no wonder he's got that facility with language. And it's, it's very much here in the North, that really sharp, great way with words. Um, the other thing about the book as well, of course, and everybody who's um, read Peter Rabbit, it's not just a sort of reading experience, is it, Peter Rabbit? And the book certainly isn't that, because the illustrations are fabulous as well. I mean, that's what I say. I mean, the book really would... <laughs> Beatrix Potter was Beatrix Potter, you know, and I'm just me. But if it were not for Eleanor Taylor's, Ellie Taylor's beautiful illustrations... I mean, it take, it's taken the two of us, uh, two women at the sort of height of their game, really, all our powers just to sort of cling on to the coattails of Beatrix mm. Potter. You know, but it's been... It's, mm. a, it's a homage, and well, Eleanor's... Mm. De her illustrations are fantastic because they are so they maintain their tradition. But if you look here at the young man's face, first of all, his because he's on the roller coaster, his, his ears are all wayward. But <laughs> she's done something. There's a little bit of expression with in the mouth, which yes. I wasn't in the old. old That's books. very true. What Ellie's done is she's given the rabbits. Because Benjamin, in my version of Benjamin, it's, I always think of them as slightly as Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Mm. That Peter's the sort of slightly sharper one, right? Okay, we're going to go and steal that lettuce. And Benjamin's a bit, mm, mm. he's just a bit like that. And Ellie's got the expression of, and Benjamin's slightly more timid, you know, follows Peter a bit, you know. So, so in the in the one I wrote before, he he had the big idea, and it was the moment of where he suddenly thought, oh, actually, I'm not, I'm quite, might be quite a bit, bit good, almost as good as Peter, but never quite, you know, with, mm. like, somebody's got an older brother or a cousin that they really admire, that's their relationship somehow.